Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Synopsys with Namit Gupta. He's going to talk today about what happens with power at the most advanced nodes and how it's getting just so much more complex. Namit, as we add more functionality into designs, just because there's certainly more real estate at the most advanced nodes, what happens? How do we deal with this? There's certainly a lot more complexity that's going on, uh, a lot more of the design techniques that need to be used. So what is happening is low power design techniques are exponentially growing and it is becoming a necessity for all the top semiconductors for the devices around us. If you look at, for example, our conversation or uh, on the phone or when we use the phone mobile device for uh, audio, uh, after a few seconds and a minute, you notice that the screen will either dim or will turn off. That is where the low power design techniques are working. The things are becoming smarter. And as more things are being packed, uh, we need to deal with the complexity it is bringing for the original design functionality these low power design techniques are bringing. So you've got a combination of both uh, increased dynamic power, you've got certainly more leakage, you've got multiple functions going on at the same time. If they all run at the same time, you basically deplete your your battery, you have, uh, it's too hot to, to hold in your hand and it also um, overheats the entire device, right? That is correct. So in the traditional approaches, uh, designers were only worried about the uh, design functionality, but as you accurately mentioned, uh, the battery and the performance of the device is becoming important. The technology node is advancing, which means that more and more functionality is being packed. They are overlapping with each other. Why don't you draw some of this out for us? Sure. What are we looking at here? So we are looking at uh, UPF aware clock domain crossing uh, problem. And uh, here, if you look at, uh, as part of the design functionality, traditionally designers are verifying RTL uh, and, and for the clock domain crossing problems, when a signal is crossing from one asynchronous clock to another, uh, typically because of uh, untimed paths, uh, they can violate the setup and hold time leading to metastability. And designers, they verify using CDC verification tools like Spyglass CDC to uncover problems where unsynchronized paths are there. So here you are seeing a diagram where UPF, after it is consistently interpreted the same way as what will come in silicon, uh, and a design functionality, uh, which has to be checked for RTL, what we are proposing here is that how can we combine the two into a single data model where you can verify the UPF impact on the CDC at RTL level. What does that buy you? So that basically uh, uncovers the bugs which can be caused because of insertion of low power devices like isolation, retention, level shifter in silicon and netlist which were not present at RTL where you are doing the traditional CDC verification. You catch those bugs which are escaping. And you've got so much complexity going into these devices because you've got parts of this are on, parts of it are off, parts of it are coming on, some things need to be running in the background. That's where you start having all these different uh, clock domain crossings happening, right? That is correct. And all that happens in the netlist level, how can you mimic consistently with the implementation at the RTA level, that is the key. So what sort of problems can you run into here? Design community and design need, they do not want just CDC or clock domain crossing problem to be checked with UPF. Since these low power design techniques are now part of the design, the whole static verification, the verification has to be UPF aware, which means that link checking, reset domain crossing, clock domain crossing, everything has to be UPF aware. So what we are proposing here is that robust combination of UPF data model RTL data model to be checked at the RTL level with a combined uh, instrumented design. If you get this wrong, it doesn't necessarily show up right away either, right? Because you can have conflicts that potentially are a series of things that come out later on. This is an excellent question, Ed. And uh, you know, the consistency of this investment or this new methodology is unique and accuracy. Let me explain with an example. What does this example show? So actually here I have drawn a case to explain the question, the important question you are asking that what if 
that this prediction at RTL level is incorrect, right? So here there is a bunch of flops which are where one of the path is connected across the module boundary and there are low power design techniques where uh, module boundaries, different power domains are specified and a person is trying to write a multiple isolation strategies to pick one of the unable signal uh, from the unconnected flops. Now when I check for the static verification or clock domain ver verification at RTL, I will not see these paths. These paths will get connected at the netlist and only one path will be picked for this particular isolation strategy. So that path, let's say a tool which is not consistent with the interpretation of implementation which is the question you asked, picks up the bottom most path, the bottom most flop to be connected with the AND gate right here. This path is going from clock one to clock one, no CDC issue, right? So there will be no violation, the design will be signed off without any issue. But what if in the silicon, the path is from clock three to clock one? This is a CDC issue going across asynchronous clocks. And even after adopting a new tool, new methodology, even after adopting a unique way to find this problem, you have missed the bug, right? That is the key area that whole methodology is based on that you need to use a consistent uh, interpretation of UPF and a sign of CDC verification on top of it. Would you have seen this at older nodes? Would this have been obvious because there's just less going on and le less functionality? Or, or is this something that's been there for a long time and we haven't had to pay attention to it as much? So earlier what was happening was that there was a less of a design functionality and very less use of low power design techniques. As the technology nodes are advancing, the more and more functionality is packed into the single device. Uh, and mobile phones and many other self-driving cars are the great examples where there are multiple functionalities possible in the same device itself. And that is causing a overlap between the low power design techniques and the packed functionality on a small real estate of the chip. And this has an effect on a lot more than just the power domains. It has an effect on things like aging, on reliability over time. Uh, which is very important in things like automotive and, and any functional safety type of markets, right? Absolutely. In fact, uh, there are uh, many more interesting applications which we can talk in the next series of conversation, how in Netlist we can uh, uh, catch this manifestation of these issues uh, coming into the design. Namit Gupta, thanks for a great explanation of a really interesting evolution of this uh, problem. I appreciate your time, Ed.